Hi, are you struggling with not knowing which type of image to use in your training business? Well, in this lesson, we're learning all about SVG graphics. These are vector images and how we're going to compare it with traditional pixel based images. So that way you know exactly what type of image to use for your logos, your icons, your PDF sales page. Hi, I'm Angel from Archie Course Experts and we help creative professionals that teach with technical services for their online courses, for their coaching websites and their membership communities. In this lesson, we're learning all about SVG graphics. We're going to learn what is it, why use it, and how to use it. We'll go over an example, and finally, we'll summarize all our top tips. First of all, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. So that's an open standard. It's a file format, and basically, it's a drawing with lots of colored points and lines and shapes. So it's almost like a coloring book. So you're going to see all these different shapes that are layered on top of each other. That's an SVG file. And that's different from a traditional photo that you would take from a camera where pixel by pixel, every single one is different. And there's just so much data on those megapixel photos. So SVG are like these shapes that come together to create like a logo or an icon. Now, why would you use an SVG instead of like a J or a PNG file? Well, vector images, SVG are the vector images. They're great for designs that need to scale up and down. If you need to just tweak a couple of shapes around, you need to move them around or change a circle into an ellipse. That's perfect for SVG files. So very simply, once you have an SVG file, you can use it for lots of different outputs of different sizes and you can maintain it very easily instead of drawing almost like with a paintbrush obviously on a digital program but instead of drawing every single pixel and moving pixels around and doing layers you just move around shapes so that's the cool thing about vector graphics so let's switch into a how-to guide first of all let's go into the, what are svg files so they're made up of many layered shapes. Think of it as a collection, a list of different shapes, and that's the SVG file. Every shape is like a polygon, an ellipsis, a rectangle, a circle, things like that. They're shapes made up of little points, and that is your vector graphics. Underneath, it's all math and formulas. It's little points. It's like a big graph paper. And you're connecting the dots, you're creating these shapes, and you're putting them, you're stacking them on top of each other. That's what an SVG does. But that's the cool trick because later you can scale it, you can stretch it, you can shrink it, and all those points will stay in proportion. You can also use text objects like fonts, right, from your font library, like true type fonts, OTF fonts, different kinds of fonts. And the fonts know how to stretch already. So once you put the text objects on these shapes, maybe it's the brand name or maybe it's a, a code name like sewing. So text objects already know how to stretch. So you can obviously use text generated by any of your font libraries. And then whether you're making a tiny SVG that's maybe 32 by 32 pixels, 4,000 pixel wide output at the end, those fonts are going to stretch just like circles and rectangles are going to stretch if that's the size that you need. Once you have an SVG file, you're going to see a bunch of points. You're going to either see shapes or if you click on those shapes, you're going to see the points like the corners of a rectangle. You can easily grab any one of those points and pull them out and make it bigger or shrink it or rotate it or any of those kinds of, even if it's a really unique shape, it doesn't have to be a traditional solid shape. It could be this custom shape that you make, almost like an artist's a palette with all the paintbrushes. That's a really unique shape. So there'll be these sets of points that connect it with a curved lines. That's in a vector. And let's just say you want to move some of the points. You just grab that point and pull it out. So that's pretty cool that you can do that with SVG files. You can also specify colors. So for every shape, Every line, you can specify, hey, what, what color am I going to fill in this shape? So if it's a heart, what color am I going to fill in that heart? 
Then you can also specify stroke, which is a fancy design art word for the outer edge of the shape. So you have the inside of the heart with a certain shade of red, and then maybe around the outside of that heart, you might do a dark, uh, a dark gray or a black. So you could specify for that heart-based shape two colors. And of course, you could do interesting things like gradients and shades, or you could even fill it in with, with a texture or some other thing like that. Basically, remember, you're thinking a bunch of shapes with a bunch of points to make to define every shape, and then each shape has coloring on the inside, potentially on the outside, and you can specify the width of stroke, not just the color, but is it four pixels, is it 10 pixels? Then later, of course, when you scale it, that width is gonna grow proportionally with it. So there's a lot of programs you can use to create SVG files. You can use Adobe Illustrator, and then there's free programs like Inkscape, or Figma, and Canva, so there's a lot of options. Some of them are focused heavily on vector, and some of them are flexible. They do images, and they do vector-based art, depending on your budget, depending on your skill level, and what you need to do. Maybe you're just going in there to edit some shapes for a design that, that you print on hats or shirts. You may use a very simple tool. Or you may use a more advanced tool where you need lots and lots of parameters and lots of control. So in the end, once you're done with these vector shapes, you can use them directly like that, or you can export them into like a PNG or a JPEG image file, and you can make it any size. Remember, the beauty about SVG files are that they scale. So you can have this heart-shaped drawing, and you can create uh, a JPEG file that's 4,000 pixels wide, or a very tiny heart that's only 16 by 16. It doesn't matter. It knows how to scale and, and your photo and, and, and your image is going to look the way it was uh, designed. Let's talk about actually using the SVG files. So you can make SVG files. So you can make like a heart or a special custom shape that you need for your business. Or you can buy a licensed SVG file, or maybe one is included with a library that you get. You know, maybe you have a collection that you bought. I like to buy from like Icon Finder and other websites like that or Envato. So you can buy an SVG there, like maybe you need a scrapbooking icon, and that's cool for a certain thing because you're probably teaching about scrap. Well, therefore, you might need a very custom image, very something to your industry, to your niche. Well, then you can buy something and then either tweak it. Remember, you're going to have access to all the points. So you can move it around if it's not exactly the type of icon that you want. So once you have those SVG files, and you'll probably end up creating a folder on your computer with a bunch of different types of SVG files, you can use it to make logos, for example, maybe your company logo. That's gonna be used on your website, your email, your social media. Once you have that logo, you might need your logo in different formats, like maybe for a business card or the website, or even on the website, there's a tiny little icon called a favorite icon that shows up on your browser tab. You're gonna need that. You're gonna need a whole bunch of versions of your logo. You don't wanna create and have all these different kinds of files for your logo. You want to have these one or two core files, and from there, you're able to export and use that logo in many different ways. And that's the beauty of SVG files. You can also use SVG art for icons, people, skills, problems for each of your customer types. Maybe you're in the music business, and you have different kinds of users. Maybe it's people in theater, or people DJs, or people creating beats. So you're gonna create these different icons for each of your users and different situations, a mixing board versus musical notes. That's perfect. That's really perfect for SVG files. You can have that collection of all those different kinds of icons. You can tweak them, you can use them to supplement text. And when you're creating sales pages and checkout pages, you might also use icons. Maybe it's an SSL secure lock for your browser to let them know, hey, you can buy from us and we're secure. Or maybe there's a guarantee seal that one of those circles with stars, like 16 stars on 16 triangles around the edge. 
And you can make different kinds of icons that you're using in different places. They can easily be changed to different colors, different sizes, all again with that one file that you're going to end up having. Maybe as a teacher, you're creating different PDF guides or resource guides. So you're going to have industry symbols for the different stuff that you're teaching. So in your PDF, you might have a bunch of different icons at different stages or a table or maybe just to help teach. Maybe you have a flow chart or a little chart or a diagram and you just want to add some icons there. If you run a community, you might have different icons for each of your community rooms. It could be a simple icon or it could be a more advanced photo if you wanted to. But either way, you may use SVG icons uh, maybe on your nav bar to highlight all your different rooms for your community. So that's another way that you can use SVG files. Finally, you may create merchandise. So you might have merch like t-shirts, bags, hats, mugs. So SVG files are easy to upload to a, a service provider that can create all these different sewn or printed or acrylic or even Cricut. You can use SVG files to add different symbols, logos, etc. Of course, it can have text because that'll stretch too. That's part of the SVG format. So if you're making merch, whether it's for your own company or for promotions or even for your customers and they're buying t-shirts and whatnot, that's cool. You can use SVG files for that too. Now let's check out an example of using SVG on your web and sales pages. So again, you're going to be using SVG files in addition to JPEGs and PNG pixel-based files. Let's go over music. So you might have like a music score with the, the, the clef and the different notes, the whole notes or whatever. You might want to just copy and paste around some musical notes. And that's really easy to do. You might want to position them in a certain spot. Very easy to just use your vector phrase program, copy and paste. Maybe you have some stencils or maybe you have this one main sheet that you're just moving around. It, it's like it's in its own layer and you can just take that whole note and move it up, down, left, right. You can copy it. If you want to make your musical score longer, you can extend the lines because at the end of the day, you know, the lines are just two points and you're going to move the points on the right further right to, to extend out your score. A vector based program, unlike a photo program where you might have to redraw an additional line. It doesn't know that there was a line there. If you're in Photoshop, you have that line, you're going to have to extend that line. You better get exactly the width, the pixel, and you need to keep drawing it. Whereas in a vector-based program, you already have the two points for your line. So you're just going to extend it outward and uh, make sure it's horizontally aligned. Now, let's just say you have a logo of a skater. It's easy to swap out and change the body. Maybe you have, with a vector-based program, you might have the outside shape, the silhouette of a skater and a skateboard doing an ollie trick. You can go ahead with an SVG program, you can shrink down that skater person, turn them into a kid, add a ponytail, or other things like that. So very easy to do. So you're gonna click on that silhouette of the body and you can either scale it down or you can you know, toggle layers. So there might be like a shape, like the ponytail, that you can turn on and off as you need to very easily. And you don't need these different images, these different uh, photos. So that, that's, and by the way, you might need photos and that's fine. That's a different tool. That's Photoshop. But for icons and different things like that, then yeah, the SVG tool could really help you. Another example is if you needed a hat icon. So you might have a really cool fedora hat icon that has colors and you have a nice trim and there's these dents, but now you need to do a wide brim fedora. So you can easily select those points that are on the outside of your hat and pull them out. Not only do you have an icon for a fedora, but you can have an icon for a wide brim fedora. Very easy to do in a vector-based tool. You're going to choose those handful of points that are around the edge, and you're going to pull them out however you see fit. You can also create other hat styles very easily. There's a lot of variations, a trilby and a derby hat, all these different kinds of hats. Once you have that core shape, you can easily tweak your vector points 
to create, you know, the indents and all these different kinds of things on your hat shape. This could apply for any of the different creative spaces that we're helping with, you know, whether it's makers or fashion or uh, performers, you're going to have these kind of baseline icons that you can tweak. And that's the beauty of the vector base tool. Let's look at a few shapes and talk about the benefits that we can squeeze these vector shapes down and up as large as we need to. Let's just say we're into the beauty industry. So we might have a, an icon of an eyebrow, an eye with the pupil and the iris and the little fun loopy eyelashes in, in an SVG format. We can take that and shrink it down and you can see and everything will be proportional. We tried to do that with an image and we squished down, let's just say we have a 600 by 600 image. We squished that down because we need a, a tiny little icon like 32 by 32. When you do that, you have low eyelashes, it's going to clash with the eyebrow, it'll all get pixelated. You're not going to know what part is the brow, what part is the eyelash or the eyeball. It's just not going to work so well. But with an SVG file, when you scale down that eye with the eyelash and the iris and the eyebrow, all that's going to scale down as well as scale up if for some reason you needed this to be on a giant poster or some other situation. That's pretty cool that you can just grab the image and then using your tool, you have your SVG, it's a really colored or not colored, however you want to use it. And then you're exporting. You just basically export it in a width and height that you specify. It could be a giant image, like a thousand by a thousand, or it could be a tiny image, like 16 by 16 pixels. Let's look at a promotion. Maybe you have a card that has a coupon, a QR code, it's a promotion, right? 20% off on something. And it has a bunch of text. With the SVG file, whatever size you need to export, whether it's a really giant image or a tiny 100 by 300, or depending on the vendor, maybe you're gonna take this image and not only put it on social media, but you're gonna use a vendor to create hard cardboard versions of this promotion or vinyl. The fonts are gonna scale that are part of the SVG format. But if the fonts were part of a small image, like a JPEG, and you took that JPEG and stretched it out, your fonts are gonna be all blurry and pixelated. It just won't work. But with an SVG file, where it's vector and there's these little points underneath every shape, when you stretch that out, it's gonna be perfect at any size. The reason is because the final pixels are created once you export your SVG file. So the SVG lets you size everything, and then whenever you're ready, you export a JPEG in that perfect dimension. It's not just taking this one image and stretching it out. It's moving the points and then drawing it at the right size. So that's the benefit of an SVG file. The same thing with a logo. You might have your company icon, your logo, the, the shape of it. And you might need a giant version of your logo, a tiny version of your logo, all these different variations. It has a shape. It doesn't even have a size. You just draw whatever you need. And then once you're done, you export it in every format you need. You might need a version for your website and that, that logo is going to be 300 pixels wide, or maybe it's the favorite icon for the browser. And that only needs to be like 32 pixels width and height. So there's all these different variations and you don't want like half your letters to disappear. So with SVG, you shrink as you need to and you stretch as you need to. You're just gonna create your shape, but when you export it, you can export it any size. That's the beauty of SVG. The lesson here is to use SVG if you wanna be able to tweak shapes and create any size images from that same source and the different size images are not gonna get blurry or distorted or pixelated because the SVG technology will draw the specific output photo that you need based on the export size that you need so that the proportions, the, the shapes, the letters, the colors, the, the size, the width of the lines, those are all in proportion. So let's summarize. Here are the top things you need to know about SVG files. There's two types of files. There's pixel files, 
that you make in Photoshop and you take on your camera. Then there's these vector shot files, these SVG files. The vector files are a bunch of shapes that could be colored and layered. And that's the main thing. And then you can stretch them out however you need, whether they're tiny or large, or you can edit and just move around those little points as you need to, and then adjust your shape. Once you're done with the SVG files, you're going to export as a PNG or JPEG, or you might just use the SVG file, like on a web page. Some programs just use that as it is. You're going to use tools like Illustrator and Inkscape, Figma and Canva to use SVG files, and you're going to need them both. There are place, there are tools and needs for images like JPEGs, and then there are tools and needs for SVG files. So now you're a lot smarter on SVG files. To learn more, check out the info and links in the notes. If you're loving this stuff, subscribe to keep leveling up your creative business. And if you need any tech help with your courses, community, or teacher website, visit www.rtcourseexperts.com. Thanks for hanging out. Let's stay in touch.